this is a regular meeting, November meeting of the Town of Webb Town Board. Can everybody please rise and to the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank everybody for attending. Make sure everybody signed up the sign-in sheet. Uh, Please put your phones on silent, if you don't mind. Uh, next regular board meeting will be on December 14, 2021 at 7 p.m. The December Audit of Claims meeting will be held on Monday, December 20th, Christmas week, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. Yep. Okay. Yes. Moving on. Correspondence. We have received a letter from Justice John Graham announcing his intention to resign as Town of Webb Town Justice on December 31st, 2021. Wow. He is becoming a Florida resident. He's okay. had a house built. He's moving down. Wow. Um, we also received two letters, one from Amber LaFount and one from Th Thoray Levy, expressing their interest in an appointment to replace Justice Graham. So that was the correspondence we had. So the first, what his term, when his term is up? It's got two more years. Two more years. All right. Um, so first order of business will be the interim appointment to replace Justice Graham. All right. Justice Graham has tendered his resignation as the Town of Webtown Justice, effective 12-31-2021. The town has received two letters of interest in the position. Would the board consider appointing someone at this time to fulfill the term left vacant by Justice Graham's resignation in order to allow the person to attend training necessary for the position. If we appoint them now. You understand? If we appoint them now, there is training that is offered in December for mm -hmm. new. So they'll be able to take. So what's the pleasure of the board? Well, do you want to have a discussion? Uh, discussion, sure. Okay. Uh, it's just so it doesn't make, make it easier. I spoke with uh, Amber Lepontman as well as Thray Lovey. And um, uh, Thray had, had actually was in indicated she wanted the job with a letter huh. um, and she has since that point told me that she was um, does not want the judge okay. position and I hope she hasn't changed her mind because that's what I just said <laughs> okay um, it was my understanding that she would be interested in fulfilling the role that is correct judges as the clerk and as the clerk yes okay. that's that is correct but she was not interested in the judge position, the justice position. Okay. For a little background, Amber right now is the court clerk for Jack, uh, Justice Graham, and Thoray is the court clerk for Justice Vinette. So, you know. But that's not part of this resolution. No, it's not. The justice. But that's where the two... Yeah. I just wanted to throw that piece of information mm -hmm. out there. All right. Um, would the board like to... I'm going to make a motion that we uh, appoint Amber LaFountain to be interim justice for the vacancy of Jack Graham. Okay. I'll second. I have a motion, I have a second. Barb, second. Any other discussion? Uh, yes. There will be an election held next year. So she won't fill two years. She'll fill one, one year, year and then there will be the an next election, election yeah. for the judge. So it will be offset, like Pat Vanets is offset from the regular elections <clears throat> because of when he took his office. So Amber will run next year. And the appointment, would it be contingent upon her taking the training? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Successfully uh, completed yeah. the training. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Can I have a roll call vote, please? Councilman Gardner? Aye. Councilman Hale? Aye. Councilwoman Green? Aye. Supervisor Burke's Jesse. Aye. Four eyes. <coughs> Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, um, just a little housekeeping. During the October regular meeting, the board passed a resolution announcing a public hearing to establish a, a bond anticipation note for the lift station replacement over at Steamboat Landing. Uh, we need to change the date of the public hearing and the resolution from tonight, 11-9-2021, to 12-14-2021 at 7 p.m. to 
to allow sufficient time to file for the, pro the proper legal announcements, which we didn't get out. So, what's the pleasure of the board? Motion. Okay, Barb. Second. Is it done? Second. Okay. Is it done? Done. Yeah. Any other discussion? Okay, thanks. Um, roll call vote. Councilman Gardner? Aye. Councilman Hale? Aye. Councilwoman Green? Aye. Supervisor Berkshire? Aye. Four eyes. Thank you. Okay, next, um, the lift station, amendment number one. The town is in agreement with GHD Engineering for the engineering of the lift station over Steamboat Landing. Uh, would the board authorize the supervisor to sign amendment number one? And I have it here if anybody wants to see it. It's quite extensive. Uh, to sign the amendment number one, authorizing GHD to oversee the additional engineering, bidding, construction, and post-construction of the project. It will potentially add another possible $81,000 to the cost of it. Um, of that, I'll have it here. What precipitated this amendment? What it, we, it was hired originally just to do the preliminary engineering to see what we were going to need to do to for a replacement. Okay, not to handle the entire project. And I think that was like twenty-four thousand. The eighty, uh, the eighty-one thousand. Hang on, there. some of it's hourly and it's an estimate. So, like I said, it's a potential of up to. That's the engineer firms. Twenty-two thousand would be hourly. Sometimes you do, sometimes you do. He will handle the bidding process. The, and they're also for them to handle the bidding, but sometimes we use a separate quality yeah. assurance personnel rather than them mm -hmm. do the on site project. 81,000 seems like a pretty good chunk of change. Well, like I said, it's, it's actually 20. Fifty-nine thousand plus there's twenty-two thousand in, in an hourly rate for oxygen potential. And what's what's do we have a rough estimate as to what the project's going to cost? Five hundred thirty-three thousand right now. So it's almost. Yeah. The engineering is always to oversee it. Chunk yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Engineering. Can we bid that out too? Is that it's like do we have to? No, you don't have to. Uh, it's my first time going for lift station, so I, just, I guess I'm just well, curious. Well, lift station is, they did the design. Yeah. They did all the Somebody design. has to bid it out. The design engineer will bid it out. Right. And um, it got changed. Uh, EFC just changed some of the parameters of it, so there's going to be some extra engineering just to be able to get it. So is that part of the 81,000 is the yeah. extra engineering? And yeah, stuff that's, like that too. that's the extra engineering that'll go with that. I, can, I, we, I, can we hold off on this? This yeah. is, um, I, I need to, yeah, I need to go through this yeah. update. So Fine. Just, Go ahead. I will forward that to you. I just got right. it today. Yeah, yeah, it's too long. long. And it was too long for me. To yeah, no, so yeah, it's, it. it's something maybe we could address at our audit meeting if it's Yeah, I just I'm trying to go through it first. Okay. Yeah. We were hoping to get it out to bid this winter sometime. <clears throat> I'll do my best to. Yeah. <laughs> just to see if we could get people to sharpen their pencils for some spring work. Okay. All right. Um, on 11 9 at 6 p.m., there was a public hearing for the 2022 preliminary budget. Uh, a general overview of the subject occurred, public comments were received, and the board discussed aspects of the budget. Uh, would the board consider a motion to adopt the 2022 preliminary budget as the adopted <laughs> operating budget for 2022? Uh, what's the pleasure of the board? I'll make the motion. Barb made the motion. Do I have a second? No, I'll second. Kurt. Is it Kurt? Okay. Let's have a roll call vote. We're not having a discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. What do you want to discuss? I want to lower. Sorry. I'm just going on record, I want to lower it. Okay. I'd like to have not, no tax increases here. And I think we could do that if we took some of that $145,000 out and kept it that way everybody would have no increase for this coming year. What hundred forty-five thousand? I'm just if I could ask. Down here, Down in here. your building CD. Oh, all right. Um, I'll say three hundred thousand of that is is fund balance, so that isn't part of the tax package. So only one hundred sixty-five thousand of that is actual taxes. 
Right. So what is that? So you're taking down to twenty thousand well, per building. But if we, we if we were sixty, what do we say? We're eighty thousand six hundred over. Well, so if we took eighty thousand six hundred and twenty six off of this. that, off of that one forty five, then <clears throat> we would have absolutely no increase in taxes this year. Okay. I thought what we had was rather moderate, with considering there was a six percent cost of living adjustment. But well, all our revenues are up to the day. Mm -hmm. I think people deserve a no uh, tax break this year. They're paying enough for gas. They're paying enough for food. I got it. No, I'm looking for the tax cap. <sighs> Okay, we'll I have a motion and a second. That, that's all I have. And we have discussion. Okay, roll call vote, please. Councilman Gardner? Aye. Councilman Hale? Nay. Jesus. Councilman Green? Aye. Supervisor Brooks? Aye. Three ayes and one nay. Yeah, I will. Okay. Yep. I, just, well. I had a epiphany. No, I knew it. Did you? Oh, I did. Okay. Well, oh, no, we'll discuss it later. Okay, uh, next on the agenda. Um, our lawyer, our legal counsel, has drawn up a licensing agreement with ADK Tex for the build out of broadband, broadband infrastructure utilizing some of the town's right of ways. I, I sent you all a copy of the agreement. I don't know if you got it. Again, that was late. Uh, would the board consider a resolution to authorize the supervisor to enter into this agreement as submitted by our legal counsel to allow access to some of the town properties for the intent of installing broadband to enhance the town's access to the internet? What they're looking to do is bury yeah. the internet fiber. And it, it's just all spelled out parameters. And, and, uh, I will make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. Uh, Don and Kurt. Any discussion? This is just for the public's information. It's just following along um, snowmobile trails, which are, mm -hmm. for instance, North Street, Rondex <coughs> Road, the, uh, those locations, and yeah. then Macaulay Mountain, where this fiber will get laid um, to help expand broadband. They, ha they have a machine that gets in and vibrates a trench down two feet, and as it's doing that, it, it, it actually buries the line as it goes along. So very little disturbance of anything. Unless no, they hit a rock. Unless they hit a rock. I asked him about that. He said it actually works pretty well until you hit solid ledge rock, and then they come up, put it in conduit, tack it to the rock, and then back down again. So they've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. All right, any other discussion? Where do they start? Okay. Okay. So could I roll call vote for this? When do they start? Right now. Sounds good. I mean, they're in the area. I saw them. Starting now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Council Gardner. Aye. Councilman Hale. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Supervisor Brooks. Aye. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> and for your other information, these guys are connected to the dank uh, hub here. This is what they're using for internet. So. The same thing that's used, used in school. Same, same thing the school is using. And I use it too. Yep. Yeah. All right, we have uh, housekeeping again. Heating fuel, number two grade. Will the board consider a resolution to advertise and accept sealed bids for the proposed purchase <coughs> of approximately 40,000 gallons of number two fuel oil to be used during the period of January 1st, 2022 to, through December 31st, 2022. Specifications are on file with the town clerk. All sealed bids are to be in the hands of the, hands of the town clerk before 7 p.m. on December 14th, 2021, at which time they will be open and read al aloud. It's a pleasure of the board. I'll make a motion to go to bed. Okay. Barb? Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? This is only for the, the, the is, differential, not for the actual fuel. Right. <laughs> not the actual cost. Not the actual cost. So, any other discussion? 
Have a roll call vote. Council Gardner? Aye. Councilman aye. Hale? He said aye. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Councilman Green? Aye. Supervisor Berkshester? Aye. Four ayes. So moved. Thank you. Uh, next. My motor fuel ultra low sulfur diesel and winter blend ultra low sulfur diesel, excuse me, 50% and 50% low sulfur kerosene blend. Will the board consider a resolution to advertise and accept sealed bids for the proposed purchase of approximately 65,000 gallons of low sulfur diesel fuel and winter blend, 50-50, uh, during the period from January 1st through December 31st of 2022. Specifications are on file with the town clerk. I'll see the sealed bids to be in the hands of the town clerk before 7 p.m. on December 14, 2021, at which time it will be open to read allowed. 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 What's the pleasure of the board? So moved. Good. Done. Mm -hmm. Good. Second? I'll second it. Kurt? Thank you. Okay. Let's have a roll call vote again. Councilman Gardner? Aye. Councilman Hale? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Supervisor Brookshire? Aye. Four Thank you. Lastly, uh, unleaded gasoline, regular ethanol, 10% ethanol, 87 octane. Will the board consider a resolution to advertise and accept sealed bids for the proposed purchase of approximately 20,000 gallons of unleaded gasoline through the period of January 1st, 2022 <coughs> to December 31st, 2022. Specifications are on file with the town clerk. All sealed bids to be in the hands of the town clerk before 7 p.m. on December 14th. 2021, at which time they'll be open to read aloud. What's well, the pleasure of the board? Motion. All right. You got to speak up. <laughs> Whose turn is it? <laughs> Whose turn is that? Sure, I'll make some motion. Keep this moving. Sure. That's first the second. Part okay. Of the um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any Good opposed? Job. How's that? Whatever they done. Good job. All right. Next, we have a new DPW hire. As per the recommendation of sub uh, Superintendent Scott Gaffney, the DPW superintendent, would the board consider a resolution appointing Carl Mooney as full-time MEO at the DPW effective November 4, <coughs> 2021, and will include a six-month probationary period? What's the pleasure of the board? I'll make the motion. Okay. Uh, and Kurt? Yep. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, Carl put himself through school to get his CDL, CDL. correct? He, he just correct. passed his CDL he's license, yes, CDL. he has a CDL. He's got some, he's working out great. So and he's been, he worked, worked real hard this one, this summer. Yeah. He was a great accent. So. All right. Um, and the pay rate will be at the starting rate. Right. For an MEO. For the union contract. All right, let's go to roll call for this one. Uh, Councilman Gardner? Aye. Councilman Hale? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Supervisor Berkshester? Aye. Four ayes. All right, we have a new hybrid hire, DPW and Highway. As per the recommendation of the DPW and Highway Superintendents, um, would the board consider a resolution appointing James Cole Jr. or the second as a full-time laborer with time to be split between DPW and the highway effective November 1st, 2021 and will include a six-month probationary period? Um, you're, I assume you're all familiar. He does work for us now on a part-time, full-time basis, whatever you want to call it. He works in the winter plowing the, the sidewalks, etc. And this summer he really uh, knuckled down and helped out at the DPW because they were shorthanded all summer and he did a good job. So he'll be, what he'll do is he will come under, his salary will come under DPW in the summer and highway in the winter is how we'll split it and pay. That's how it works. So he'll switch back and forth where they need it. So both department heads are good with that. Yes, and they both of them came in and we discussed it and they were both, we were both good with it. So. so so moved. Don, do I have a second? Why not? Outside. Yep. Bar? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Let's have a roll call vote on that. Councilman Gardner? Aye. Councilman Hale? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Supervisor Brooks? Aye. Right. So moved. Thank you. Last one. I heard everybody. 
Yeah, yeah, we have a new highway hire. As per the recommendation of Highway Superintendent Casey Crowfoot, would the board consider a resolution appointing James Furland as full-time MEO effective November 1st, 2021, and will include a six-month probationary period? What's the pleasure of the board? Um, James works part-time in the winter. He was a wingman the last couple winters. So. Casey had an opening because we lost him. Is he going to see it yet? Does he? I'm not really I'm sure. I'm not sure. He's a wing. He must. He's a no, wingman wouldn't need him. No, wingman wouldn't need him. But making him full time, I would assume. No idea. Not a full time. He wants him, I guess. He, it was his recommendation. All right. Those cases. No moved. Okay. Don, do I have a second? I'll second. Kurt? Let's have a roll call vote. Yeah. Councilman Gardner? Aye. Councilman Hale? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Supervisor Berkshire? Aye. So Aye. moved. Thank you. All right. Councilman Gardner, do you have anything to? Uh, yeah, I got a few things. Uh, the mountain bike trail, the final one of the year. I don't mean with basically. Room. I have to get my glasses. I yeah, yeah. Be Is uh, basically done. They finished all the heavy lifting on it. They're just raking it out and kind of taking care of the final little hand finishing touches mm -hmm. to it. But it, it's more or less done. Uh, they apparently they're super excited about it. So it's goes down across Challenger and and. Uh, uh, the blades there, uh, off the left hand side there, and stuff like that. Okay. It's going to be a cool, cool trail that will complete the full round from the ro the road trip trail that the county put in or paid for. It's going to complete the down section coming down to the back side over to the chairlift over there so people can go around the whole back side and come around the top bottom with a fun little trail. Um, the uh, I've been working with Don Hall as far as creating a uh, survey monkey. Uh, survey of the housing uh, for the housing survey um, to make it a little more user friendly on phones and tablets and stuff like that. Uh, I hit a little snag because we did use the Survey Monkey back for the police department. Um, now that I'm trying to renew it again, they're trying to hit me for $421 with tax uh, to renew the subscription. They want me to do monthly, they're making me buy a, a full year. Mm. up front. So I've been trying to get around that, but basically if we're going to do it that way, I discovered that today that it was going to cost about 421 bucks, so, so much roughly in that zone with tax. So it does work well. So I think that if we're going to do a survey and put it out there, I think it's a, a great format to yeah. do it because you don't have to download anything, you don't have to email anything back, you just go through, you tap the buttons, it's all set up. I mean, it's, I mean, I'll show you one, but I wouldn't let me send it to anybody without paying for it without the upgrade. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, so it's basically done and in there, it just has to go and then we can tweak some stuff and whatever. But uh, So my recommendation is, is that we just pay for the year subscription, maybe we'll find other things that we want to survey out or, you know. Um, but well, we can take that out of, that we have some money set aside for that program. Take it out of there, or we're going to take it out of the What money is to decide for what program? Well, I mean, you're in the mountain bikes. Oh, no, no, that's for the housing. Well, the housing, yeah, that's the housing. Yeah. housing. Yeah. So okay. that's just come out of buildings. Okay. So we're talking buildings. So that's all. That's just, I mean, I'm not okay. sure how that works out, but I, I discovered that around four o'clock today. We're paying so. bills on Friday if you yeah. want to get paid back. I'm not worried about getting I didn't done yet. I just paid. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. If like everybody's cool with that, I'll, 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 I'll move forward with that. Um, and then uh, CA hung the holiday lights this past weekend. Uh, they ran into a little bit of a snag that a whole set of components didn't want to work, but the manufacturers have agreed to replace them, so the new replacements are on their way. Um, and then they put up a new bunch of new lights too. So uh, And then uh, there is a timer that's installed over there now. Okay. Uh, the timer just needs to get, I need to have Eric come over and it's way out of my zone like looking at that thing. I'm like, Plug your page I, I just, I, I don't know how to set it up. So, but whatever, he'll, he'll get it set up. It's it's supposed to be, if the power goes out and comes back on, it still memorizes the whole thing and everything like that. Okay. So that'll keep it from four to midnight. What, what's, that's where you're going for. Right, four to midnight, because that will be, so yeah. four to midnight. Um, and then, uh, let's see. He's a Clarkson wizard. He should be able to pull that off. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, so, and then I know Jackie 
you, I don't know if you want to say, but Jackie's advertising for jobs for next year for lifeguards and um, working over in the, um, with the kids and stuff like that, counselors. Uh, and it has a new ad out at the <coughs> Strand Theater, so that's being advertised for that way too. And brochures, or you got. I some, created them, I distributed some of them, and I'll continue to do right, that. Right, so that'll be yeah. moving forward with that. And then Casey, pickleball is still going, right? Pickleball is going. Um, adult basketball, if they have enough adults, and kettlebell and Pilates. So. Um, and then Chuck's got the signage going up for the snowmobile trails. He said that everything's pretty much basically complete. They're just putting the final touches with that, and they're basically ready to go. There's, you know, more or less once snow gets going. The trailer park, the trailer parking lot is locked for now until after snowdio, because that works great for the trailers that nobody drops off all the trailers and leaves them there for the whole winter now. That after snowdio is done, that gets opened up, and that seems to have resolved the filling it all up before season even starts. So we're staying on that same trend uh, so he told me he'd lock that up today and he's going to move the rocks around uh, right, this yeah. week yeah. Uh, and then lastly I, I guess I, I, um, I the North Street with the field we there was a talk of opening up North Street with the for the kids to play soccer and stuff but then everything that happened at the school and the nets weren't going to be able to get down and so it was decided not to put that down but the testing I know is happening in three days and there's another two week window for the next set of testing, I think, if I remember correctly, or another yeah, 10 days. Weeks, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know what everybody wants to do or how, where we stand with that, but I guess, you know, I wasn't going to bring it up because I think we thought it was done, but I'm not sure if there's still a demand for putting the carpet down for that period of time or. You're coming up on Snowdio faster periods. No, I know. There was just that short window there that they were going to take, roll it up, and put it back down. And I mean, I guess I'm not sure. My, my feeling is that um, when I talked with the school representatives, um, Rex and Diane Haru, they're, they're not opening anything up. Yeah. So all of sixth grade is sick. There's a lot of, I think they sent all the elementary kids. They're all virtual next now. Week. Yeah. So High school kids are out I would too. say until after, after Snow Hill. Wow. Then and that let's do it. And that was kind of my take on it too right now with that. Once, once I heard that that day, I was kind of like, all right, this is, you know, this probably isn't the best time to go off and. Yeah and do that but just I just I wanted to bring it up you're here and I know there's people here that yeah. they, you know just All make sure that's not like a, next week make so. sure I'm not missing something here with that I guess or yeah uh, kind of kind of MIA down. too um I had to leave for a family emergency but um yeah they there's a group of parents that are willing to come help too um the setup and takedown is pretty it, it takes time yeah, and it's not simple either so you need people it's work <laughs> yeah work. and there's at least a group of 20 parents that would come help. Um, so if we did need to pull it up at any time for testing, um, and then does the testing, do we really need to do drive through? That was the other thing. Um, where if, if, because I was doing the testing, if we had um, a station in there um, and utilize the outside space so that they drove around, so if there were cones, you could bring them forward, um, and then the testing, because you don't want the, the little cards to blow away. Okay. So if they had an area to do that, inside um you guys they could do that around the field yeah. that's down but we we have snow to work around too so yeah. they kind of wanted to do it in the downtime between the varsity sports yeah you tell us how you want to do the testing i mean it's we did it that way because that was the recommendation mm -hmm. the first time to yeah. protect the girls that were in there from the weather yep but it was pretty cold anyways wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In January, for sure. And the wind yeah, it was blows right through yeah. with the doors open. Yep. So basically, there's no demand for it between now and Snowdio, more or less, right? Just because of the short period of time. And the, the kids that are, yeah. Right. Okay. So they pick, yeah. so, so yeah, pick it up from there. So. It takes two guys to get the nets back up on the ceiling. And I want those new lights protected. Cause right. Oh, yeah. We just put those up. And then we got you got to cover the windows in the kitchen. It's not just a matter of rolling out the Side. Yeah, it's a lot of work. A lot to go, there's a lot yeah. that goes with it. If I'm not mistaken, we're using the same protocol for Park Ave, correct? Right? Yes, there's no activities. open, right, right okay. now there's no open gym type stuff. What is this, the Delta variant that we're getting hit with? Is it it's just so, kids, uh, unvaccinated age kids, you know. And it's spread. But yeah. parents are getting it too, they're, you know, it's just kind of got, it, there was a bit of a burst there. To happen for whatever but reason. Maybe the Delta variant. I guess so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, the parents are probably 
yeah. 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 So, <clears throat> just so you know, our, our health insurance agent, his family are all home quarantined. Oh, they, all have it. they do, the kids do. Yeah, it's all these unvaccinated kids. Is that it? Uh, I think so. Yep. Come on. Where are you? Where are you? Okay. All right. Health of the nail. A couple things. Um, I. All right. I have a proposal here for the wastewater treatment plant. Um, and we've got a number on it. That's for replacement of half of the plant, the mechanical section, not the whole roof. All right. Because uh, the whole roof was substantially more. Um, this has more penetrations, but this is a this is the area that really needs to be done because this is where if the water comes through, it can actually damage the structure as well as the mechanical capabilities of the plant. What we're looking at this is bit, this is just a quote for two hundred eighty seven thousand uh, dollars to do that. Uh, this is from uh, SJBS. They're a commercial contractor uh, that does roofing. Uh, I have a scope of work that John Morelli and myself actually put together for this project, uh, inclusive of all the warranty and bonds and everything. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> I'm not suggesting we take this. I'm saying um, we have one. Uh, this is the same scope. I'd like to use the scope and uh, get a hold of, uh, try to get a couple other people to bid sure. on this. I don't think you have it. I did send it. Yeah, you did send it. It's it 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 the same one you emailed him. Yeah. So, um, what do you want to, how do you want me to move forward on that? Uh, give it to Scott. Let's go. Let's Scott do it? Yeah, let's right. Scott Scott's on vacation for Monday, so. Yeah. Oh, is he? Yes. Well, I mean, we could actually get it done this year. <clears throat> I have the email that you saw. I'll forward it to Okay, Scott. thanks. He's on vacation, but he was in his that's, office. That's fine. It's not going to, I mean, it's been leaking for years, so. Right. <laughs> it's another week, right? It'll, it'll freeze up. All right. Um, the other thing I have is I handed out um, to everybody the other night when we were here on Tuesday, was um, Yeah, I think so. This is a letter from Old Forge Lake Cruises, which is Central Adirondack Transportation Incorporated. Um, they were the owners of all the boats and vessels and the equipment. Uh, right here in town, yeah, and then uh, he has also Old Forge Aquatic Recreation Terminal LLC. So the two entities, both owned by uh, Paul W. Lippman and his mother. And um, this is a this is actually a letter of interest. Uh, uh, there, there, a letter of interest to actually sell this property and these uh, and. All the assets to the town of Webb if we <coughs> so want to buy it. Uh, th this document allows us to further go forward and um, uh, seek out funding through Herkimer County IDA. Uh, we do have a $500,000 allocation commitment from Herkimer County um, the legislative body in regards to this. Uh, so, this, if we agree upon this and we pass a resolution to um, pursue con uh, uh, contingent upon, well, the mo it would be basically pass a uh, resolution to possibly acquire the Central Adirondack Transportation Incorporated and Old Forge Aquatic Recreation LLC. Um, and it would be, the purchase would be contingent upon a successful acquisition of grant funding uh, of the said $500,000 grant from Herkimer County, which is currently allocated, and the balance of the purchase uh, with Herkimer IDA through a grant application. Um, if we want to go down that road, um, so I put that in the form of a motion if that's what you want to do. We are not agreeing to purchase anything. We are just agreeing to seek funding for the said purchase. What do you want to do? Is there, I mean, is there a way to actually go over there and walk that lot to understand sure. the, like, I just don't, I, I look over there, but I don't know, like, everything that's included with it over there and stuff like that. Absolutely. So. I met with them in a second. For right now, I could forward that letter to, uh, I can't remember her name off yet, Syracuse, with the Empire State Development. Right, but they, they had, <coughs> we already, we sent that, but. No, not for, not for this lot. 
Did we? No. Oh. The letter oh. of intent went to John Pizek. John Pizek. Right. John Pizek. Yeah. Went to. But he he's requesting. We have to actually say, well, yeah, we want to actually pursue this. You know, the possibility of doing this. Oh, he does. Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, that's what <coughs> my conversation with him and your conversation both said that's what he wanted. And that well, that mine was from uh, whatever her name is in Syracuse. Right. Um, but then, at the same token, now he wants a resolution in that regard that we are actually seeking funding for. That's what I got. Do we have an idea what it would cost to develop it? With uh, we could actually go pretty turnkey on it, but we'll probably have a hundred thousand dollars into development. That was just a quick breakdown we did. Came okay. up like eighty-nine thousand for actually changing, putting a slide in span creek, uh, concrete structure into the ramp area, so that we would have a, a firm terracotta rather than just a mud ramp. The all the walling and the uh, sheet piling is in very good shape, and uh, there is more property there than we thought. Regards where the fences are located, they're actually 10 foot onto the property. Mm -hmm. um, there is a survey map that has not been updated, but can be updated because uh, Willie Hollister actually surveyed the property. So the intention is just to have a launch ramp? Launch ramp, and we could probably put finger docks in it. That, okay. point. that is the intention. Okay. Do you see it as being like a rental thing where you rent it out to somebody? Well, I mean, that, with the with the with the units themselves, there are a number of people that want to. He has two people, two different entities that would like to continue on the Old Forge Lake cruises, but they um, don't want to buy the whole thing. All right. We'll have the boats, so we could actually lease them out. He's happy to forward those people to us if that's what we want. Interesting. And there is a marine survey that comes with all this. Mm -hmm. It actually puts a value on the, the boats and the, the equipment and everything. It's a good piece of property. I would suggest everybody walk it. And I am happy to walk it with you. I'd be interested to know what the other people that are interested in, what their interest would be of using that land or, or vice versa as far as... Well, he's, you know, he's the one that's actually driving the bus on that. He hasn't given us the, the information because um, that's a deal. If our deal doesn't go through, that's his deal with them. Right. But he may work out, so that may be something completely different. He didn't offer it to me. He said he would, if we are going in that direction and that's what we want to do, he would supply us with the entities that might consider um, operating that. Because I'd like to keep the concession. I think it's a neat feature to have in town. If we could do that. I agree. I just have to weigh the cost. But I'm pretty much yeah, getting it all paid for you, Dave. Yeah, cost in return. I think you'd be surprised. I don't know if you'll see would be, big yeah. money coming in on the boat. I don't think that. I think that's a, a business that somebody might have. It'll be a nice business for somebody, and it's a good attraction for the town. I don't think that's a home run in itself. But the actually the operation of the uh, boat launch and pot uh, potential vessel parking yeah. for over nice days might solve a lot of problems. Not to mention, we don't have a boat ramp in all of the town. Well, we do actually. We have a, a privately owned boat ramp that's going to be opened up again this year. So I'm going to. I, I am not in favor of purchasing this property because I don't think that we have any idea what actual costs are going to be beyond purchasing it. And to me, if he's got people who are interested in, in running the boats, then let him rent to those people and let them run the boats. But I just. I'm not in favor of it. I, I haven't been from the start. I know that. So, I mean, I What's the agree. value of the boats? Do they, as opposed to the it's in here. You guys didn't read any of your paper. I did. It was like one ninety one or something. Three hundred ten thousand for all the boats. For all the equipment. It's not as simple as just buying the property because if if he doesn't have people that want to run it, then we've got to find people to run it. Or we, or get, rid of, or we get rid of the boats. Well, you get rid of the boats, but still, it's just I, I don't know. You're taking a huge chunk of property off tax rolls, and I, mm -hmm. I just don't think it makes sense. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, that's what I got. Okay. Yeah, I I I I got I didn't think about it. I mean, if we lease the boats, that means we're responsible for. It. Maintenance. No, no, we have to lease it out as a package. They, they, that's a lease on the name or lease situation, but 
I, again, we don't know. I don't know. I'm. I don't really care if we lease the votes. I'd rather just. I'd rather just wholesale the votes and be done. But they have an venue in town. Some people really like the lake cruises. It's unfortunate to lose them. He hasn't made effort to sell it publicly, so I don't understand why it's important for us to save it when he has not made an effort to sell it. Well, I think he has been talking to some people. Well, sometimes if you put it out there as an advertised thing, more people might know. I can't get inside his head on that. I got to think about it a little bit. Well, all I was asking is if we can actually see if we can secure the funding for it. Then, if you want to, then if you want to flatten it, you can flatten it at that point in time. There's no, it doesn't cost us a dime to actually see if we can get. You no, know, we can probably. I, I'm almost positive we can secure the Empire State Development funding, and if we don't use it, it just goes back into the fund. Exactly my point. Right. So, so I just send a letter to the cap. Right. Here to the that's all. That's I'm not trying to get you to pull a trigger on buying anything. I'm right. just trying to move it forward so that we can actually get some funding for it. And if we can get it all paid for, that doesn't hurt the taxpayers at all. And we need it. Sounds too simple. Hmm? Sounds too simple. I know, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's all I got. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Councilwoman Green. Oh, she's got page. No, I crossed half of it out because I'm going to let Mary Moore talk and now I'm going to <laughs> those. Um, I did talk with Don Hall uh, today and uh, actually this is from a prior conversation. Uh, Dave, I talked to you about this. Bob Kelly from Utica Municipal Housing Authority or People First has a lawyer that is located in Washington, D.C., who works in housing. And he would like to come and talk with us, uh, uh, just another information gathering type of circumstance. And um, he would, there's a cost for him to come. It's uh, $2,500 plus expenses, which Bob said the Housing Authority will cover all expenses for him to come. So I've asked Don to find a date so that we can get something set up when when this person is available to come in. I don't even have his name, I apologize. Um, so I'm working with him to get that set up. And then today I did talk to Chris Lott and he said you yeah. you, you spoke with him as well yeah. from Barton and LaJudas. And he is coming on uh, November 18th to do a site visit to um, get a, an established eight acres or whatever that boundary is going to be down there for the um, housing development, and I put a phone call into Will Hollister to invite him that day as well. So um, Don will come also. Don Hall is going to okay, be present for that too. Just so is the intent is to have a Willie Hollister do delineate that, 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 right? Survey, yeah. So the, the engineer, Chris Lawton, will kind of help us with the... Yeah, work. that's all. It all works hand in hand. Right. He comes right. up and looks at the property and says, all right, here's what's usable, or here's what I would recommend. Right. Well, it would be nice if Willie was... Mr. Hollister is completely up to speed on it. So oh, absolutely. Say, hey, by the way, this is, he's got the map, you know, right. up thereabouts. <coughs> Rather than him just saying it's a great hill, it would be nice if he had an idea where the corners were ahead of time. Even if he'd not staked it, but if he'd be. Yeah, it was a little frustrating because I got a hold of Chris and I talked to him and, and then he had to cancel. And then I never heard back from him. Finally, he was on vacation. Oh. <coughs> so I didn't mean to interrupt. That's no, that's all right. right. I, I, did. Did, I did put a call into Willie this morning, so hopefully I hear back from him in a day. I'll give him a call again if I don't. Um, <clears throat> so, on that same note, when you were talking about the survey, Kurt, um, there's the Survey Monkey survey that you're doing that we're going to update a little bit. Don said he wants to talk about that just to make it a little more current, and that's from the original survey that was done along with the whole housing study. So he's also working on a secondary survey that he might want to use that as well, I'm not sure but it's going to be a little more targeted because it's um, for people who need work done on their current homes. So, you know, what condition is your roof in? What condition is your heating system in? Do you need your porch replaced? All those kinds of things. And I believe the mobile home replacement program will be part of this also. But it will go out to individuals that own homes that need help that could use financial assistance for that help. So he's, he's working on that now. I just saw a draft copy, but we're, we're working to get that together. So um, 
so good things in regard to housing. And, um, we're, we're trying to do our due diligence on all of this to make sure we're crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's. Um, once that's established, once we get these things in place, um, then I will talk to Mark Nagel um, okay. and, and see about the road moving. He is the guy. Yes, yes, thank you for that. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah Mark Nagel's the highway engineer for Herkimer County, so I'll be talking with him about the road. We will be talking with him about the road. And, and that's all. I wanted to ask Mary if she would just address the MVHS meeting that we had with the Community Health and Wellness Group. Um, sure. Um, just briefly, uh, the Community Health and Wellness Fund has a, a, a health care committee. And um, we asked for a meeting with, um, uh, sorry, with uh, some officials from MVHS. This is sort of a continuation of what the former WAC group was doing, if you remember, it's the Web Healthcare Advisory Council. Um, the, the duties have been taken over by this committee of the, the um, Health Center Fund, or the Community Health and Wellness Fund, same thing. Um, so we met, the, the, the committee members were Don Kelly, uh, Tony Lister, Dave Bergstresser, Jackie Englert, um, myself, and Barb Green was, is an advisor to the committee. And we met with Darlene Stromstad, who's the, the CEO, uh, Mary Zielinski, who's our new contact person, uh, Lisa Volo, who's working with um, some paramedicine uh, things for the town, and um, Dr. Polanski. We invited Dr. Polanski. And then there's a man, I can't remember his last name, Matt. Matt Yelton. Thank you, Matt yes. Yelton, who was also uh, who is the Herkimer County he's coordinator the, for he's the, the mid state mid state EMS mid state coordinator. EMS coordinator he's had for three counties. Three counties. Okay. Anyway, so it was it was a really good meeting. Uh, we just we wanted to talk about primarily um, the physician recruitment and retention program that we had started prior to COVID, and to make sure that they're still on board um, with being a partner uh, with us in, in that effort. And what that is basically, it's in the event that we um, lose one of our physicians um, to retirement or whatever, uh, that we'll be ready to recruit uh, a new physician. And um, that's offering a stipend, an annual stipend, thinking that, you know, especially new doctors coming out with a huge debt load that this would be an enticement for them to come here and to have a requirement for them to stay for a number of years and so forth. So there are some other some, uh, some other terms that will be negotiated. Uh, but they are interested in doing that. They will provide half the funds and the Health Center Fund would be responsible for raising the other half. Um, we also talked about the possibility of supporting a radiation, a radiation technology students since we've, we've had trouble keeping um, a radiation tech here for x-rays and we thought that if a local person was interested we could support them, support their education uh, again with an agreement to serve here at the town web for a number of years in exchange for some monetary assistance. Um, we're, we haven't developed that much at all, we're just in the beginning stages of that. Uh, Don Kelly's talking to some people at MBHS about that possibility I think this week or maybe next week. Um, the other things we talked about, a we, we, uh, number of us have been hearing about uh, some rumors more than anything about um, urgent care. Um, I heard some really wild ones, <laughs> so I just wanted to know where MVHS stood on, on that. And they, um, there was a, a grant that they had looked at um, with uh, the CAP21 Health Care Committee that didn't go forward. Um, but they, so there are no plans um, by MBHS at the current at the current time to develop an actual urgent care facility. However, we've discussed uh, the concept with them of a convenient care, um, which essentially is increasing the hours at the health center, um, and which would also mean an increase in staff, which has always been an issue. Um, but they're they're working on they're very open to doing that with having expanded hours. Um, and we talked somewhat about the, the seasonal fluctuations in, in population 
and how you know how we could handle that. So we're again, we're not at any real planning stage for that yet, but they're very open to doing that. Um, and on a related topic, they're looking at um, they're working at, on a paramedicine program, which we found really exciting. Um, Mobile integrated. Robin health. and Carol, yeah. Carol, you're probably both more much more. Uh, aware of that, yes, the mobile integrated healthcare, uh, where uh, it's just in a nutshell, where a um, um, a nurse practitioner probably could be hired to do some of the non-emergent uh, calls that the ambulance corps receives. Um, you know, there they do get a, quite a number of calls apparently where people don't really need to be transported to the hospital. They end up going and then being sent home. There's a, you know, MBHS doesn't want people to have to go to the hospital if they don't need to. So they're very willing to partner uh, with the ambulance corps to to develop this paramedicine program. And that's that's the big thing that um, uh, Matt is working on. Yeah. Um, with that, he's he's right on top of it. Um, you know, New York State's been nothing but a barrier to this happening right. since we started talking about it 10 years ago. Um, but apparently there's some cracks opening up now and some more possibilities are, are coming to, to fruition that, that are probably going to be, you know, where I don't know what time frame we're talking about. I'm hoping within the next year they'll have some, some kind of a program developed. Um, so that's really was the crux of, of the meeting. It was, it was great. We're going to be meeting with them on a fairly regular basis. And uh, we'll just try to keep the public informed of what we find out. As we go forward. Thank you. Yes. you know, one one little thing I wanted to interject there too. It was mentioned that when Mia goes on vacation or takes a sick day or whatever, there's no phlebotomist, and we have nurses who can actually do phlebotomy, but they couldn't use this different computer program. So it's as simple as making a change so huh. that our nurses can go into that computer program to draw blood when Nia is on vacation or out of her office for whatever reason. It makes so, a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. Never did they have good as she is. She I is don't know. <laughs> <laughs> She's really good. Yeah. But it's better than having, you know, we have people that have to go all the time, so it would be nice to be able to know that that service is there. So, thank and you. To expound a little bit on your mobile integrated health care, it's more along the lines of use, utilizing the ambulance to go over and follow up on patients at the, that have either had procedures. Yeah. or been discharged. That's that's the yeah. big impetus. People that, that are discharged in the hospital, we don't have a public health nurse right. anymore. Yeah. Um, at home care used to service us once the public health nurse disappeared and there's, now they don't have enough people to do that. So we're really left at leaving people in the wind right. after they get out of the hospital and they really need follow-up services. Well, so some, Sometimes those people need nothing more than just someone to show up and say exactly. you're doing okay. It, yeah, and say you're okay, your blood pressure's good, you're, you know, whatever it is. So. You know, that's that's. They're trying to prevent reentry right. back into the hospital. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a good thing. Yeah. It's been they've been doing it out west forever, yeah. for years. <laughs> so. They're not in New York State. New York State's <laughs> always the last one. They've been doing it in New York State recently. I mean, and yeah. down the county, right? Yeah, a couple of places, right? Matt was saying, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Mike, do you have anything? <laughs> That's the quietest I've like, ever heard Mike at a meeting. <laughs> Actually, I have a note from Mike. Uh, that's right. No way. <laughs> yes, we do. I'm not surprised. <laughs> to the public. Did you get the right one? That's not I fair. did. Not to the public, I would like to thank all those who supported me in this past election. I have much respect and appreciate for this position. My absence from this meeting was planned months ago. I look forward to being your counselor for the next four years. Thank you. Respectfully, Mike Ross. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, Dave. Okay. But I do have, I do have one. You have thing. some business, don't um, you? On Friday, this Friday, 11, 12, I need two board members to come look at bills around 9 o'clock. I we're, can come. We're paying bills early. <coughs> Ron's taking a comptroller class, so we need to get the bills done early. So if somebody could pop in. Two people pop At least two people pop in. Around the 12th? You feel free to text me if you want to. And yeah, okay. I'll send a text out for the reminder. So at 9 o'clock, we can start. Okay. I won't be here. I'll be in classes. That's all I have. Okay. Um, public, anything from the audience? Wow. Okay, let's get Marianne a chance back here. Okay.
Um, I just want to ask when you guys are, I hear the word survey coming up, does that, am I to understand that the survey has been done on that property for the housing? No. Okay. No, so that. There's this, two different surveys. Okay, yeah, so can you explain that because I'm a little confused. The, the, well, the Will Hollister coming to meet with the land engineer, um, that is a physical survey of the property. What Kurt and I are talking about separately is a survey of the public um, it's an asking questions survey. for housing, oh, housing, for for housing, housing survey. data. A needs yeah, assessment. Sorry. Survey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A land survey versus a okay. study on housing. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any idea when that survey is going to be? Which Take one? Care. The, one <laughs> the one for the housing for the prop, proper. We're, we're meeting on the 18th to start delineating where that property is. Okay. Time after that, could that survey. Yeah. Okay, so they uh, want that um, Chris Lawton. He's yes. the engineer for He's, a, he's the site be, engineer. So he's the site engineer, but so they'll be working side by side with the surveyor. Thanks, Mike. With the surveyor already. Well, um, Willie surveyed the land. So Willie's do this. We have a yeah, we have. We have. Sir, I've been wondering why. What no, we have this Willie. Is to, this is to identify the okay. smaller parcel that okay. will actually need to be subdivided at some point okay. from the larger parcel that has been surveyed. Right. We don't have a survey of yeah. the of smaller the parcel. smaller part. Right. We have the whole parcel. Okay. But you need you need to know that. what the size of the parcel is, where it is, right. in order just for things like incorporating it into the sewer right. district. Right. Yeah. Well, the, you know, understood when um, right. the gentleman was here, and it just seemed like those were two very primary components yeah. that needed to be taken care of. And then you, when you um, bring him on and make an agreement with him, and you have a monthly, you're paying him, but you don't have the very basics. Right done yet so but I guess that's where I'm a little caught up the well what I mentioned about the second survey uh -huh. that will the surveying people asking about their homes mm -hmm. he is also a part of that he's going to help there's various funding levels that we okay. can get and he has contacts for all of those different types of funding levels for housing so we we kid that he's doing all things housing for the town but anything that's related to that sort of thing he's he's able to help us with okay so. and, that, and that stuff is regardless of wherever anything is done with housing we need to have those things uh, all that paperwork and all yeah, that housekeeping all done okay. regardless of whatever happens with any of these programs there's a lot of programs that are not even including that that are a possibility for the community mm -hmm. so that's the stuff that we're trying to do with this other online survey stuff and it's all this data mm -hmm. that we're going to start collecting so that we can qualify for this big list of things mm -hmm. that are out there right. basically you know so okay and um my second thing is just i, I um this thing about the old forge lake cruises i guess i'm on board with barb on this is i just can't understand why the town would want to get involved and i understand what what you're saying don as far as getting the money and everything but why does the town want to get involved in something that really somebody in the private sector could run with and really make some good money off of it. Well, it's primarily a boat launch because we don't have a boat launch. Right, really but there's primarily. private businesses that can do that. And I'm wondering well, how much does the town want to get involved and how much money is the town in buying? And with people coming directly to the town board saying, well, you can use this property and I know it'll be valuable to you, rather than marketing to the private sector. Well, and he's, I been, just, he's been marketing it, but he doesn't have any. But you know, like you said, like okay, does the town want to get the town is having a hard time getting employees? So now you're going to add a whole other segment of this tourism. Probably. Well, but at the same I just token, don't get it. I at think the that same somebody token, you would have want to do people it. that really wanted boat docking on the waterfront and we said we were going to come up with a plan for that this is part of the this could be mm -hmm. potentially a solution to the plan we all said we were going to come up mm -hmm. with it. and having and the townspeople that were all at the meetings all said that, well we could hire a couple of people to manage the dock well they, they could manage the boat launch you know and the the boats are not that's just because some people have actually moved to the position where they said well we'd like not to lose that you know that feature that we have right. in town but to me, I don't care if we keep that. I just wanted the boat launch. Sure. We could sell those. I can sell them to Lake George. They're mm -hmm. looking for boats, so not but a problem. But could pri the private sector go in and do that just the same? 
he may end up doing that in, in the long sure. run anyway. So then yeah. so maybe we'll but end up with a, I mean. we may end up with a like steward shop down there. Who knows? Straight to the town. Or maybe that's where they'll put the uh, the Dollar General. With you know, like with Funan coming and saying, "Oh, I got this property, and you know, I want to sell this." It's just, I mean. I'm kind of a newbie coming back. There's a lot of people looking like at the property. Million dollars and they, they the probably will right buy it. Somebody will buy it yeah. somewhere along. Yeah, somebody will. But I, I said, how much does the town have to keep putting into it? I guess that's right now we're not putting any money into it. And no, but right now we've got five hundred thousand dollar committed, right. committed not from the town at all, and Is we're there? looking for the rest of it to be paid for other programs. So if we buy it, we're not by using any town tax money to do it. But in the long run, it will cost the town money. My, my question always with this sort of thing is, is this municipal responsibility? And I don't and I think that's a good question. Well, it's, it's, it's no more so than we have snowmobile trails. We're on the snowmobile trail system. We're in the recreational the tourism same. business. It's not the same. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Dave. Mm -hmm. is, uh, <laughs> go ahead, Tom. Yeah, Mary, yeah, Mary go ahead. Go ahead, Mary. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I was, the, I was on the same topic, that's all. So. <laughs> just a couple quick things. Um, just curious about the Survey Monkey survey. Um, if you have a plan for how you're going to be disseminating that. As far as just reading it out? Yeah, I mean, how are people going to know about it? Yeah, I mean, we'll put it back out on the social media platforms, which we did before, um, and um, distribute it that way. Uh, there's a CA mailing list that hopefully we'll be able to use, utilize that for, too. Uh, out to the businesses. Uh, the one big downfall that, not downfall, but I think one of the things that when we did the survey before, the platform that it was on, you, if you were on a cell phone or if you were on a tablet, it didn't work well. Where if you're using the survey monkey, it doesn't matter what you're on. You tap it, it's going to go through. It, it just works on every platform. It's very quick. It's very easy. It, it works fast. It, we did it with the police uh, reform uh, and it works. So it just it what happened before. It just it became hard for people, and so there some people had to email things in and mail things in, and it just didn't get a huge response because of that. And there was people that said that they would have done it right. if it was on an easier format. Yeah. So I, I think that's basically what it comes down to is we're just gonna re put it out. And then also there were some new things that we've learned too that better questions start adding additional questions or taking some things out that might not be as relevant now and putting some new ones in so that it's a little more, you know, we've learned a lot too in the last year since the first one was put out. So I, I think it's just a matter of us getting a better understanding and making sure that we do truly understand the needs of the community. It was uh, actually two years. Yeah, it was yeah. 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 So I guess I just, you know, it's concerned that if you were just going to keep it a social media thing that it wouldn't be widely disseminated. So I was hoping that you'd have more advertising of it so that people that aren't always on social media yeah. um, get to see it and get to do it and as, as well. And other than that, um, to par possibly have a, a group of volunteers ready to help people do it that aren't internet savvy, you know, like people like all the people we did to for, to get vaccinations and yeah. stuff like that. So this, there were is, tons of them. this so, is specific to workforce housing again. Again. So but, what Mike Farmer worked with Don Hall and yeah. it went out to an email list of businesses. So business owners got this and they disseminated it to their employees also. Mm -hmm. So that's another uh, another way that this can be yeah. shared. Well, that's smart. Yeah. The, yeah. the yeah. response rate was terrible. Yeah. It was truly it's, terrible. I didn't even know about it. I will so, say the police reform survey. I had we had a very tight window. I was on that committee. I feel like it was eight to ten days. We wow. had two hundred and fifty responses. I feel like the other one never broke. It definitely didn't break triple digits. No. Oh, I had to fill it out by hand. I couldn't fill it out on a computer. Oh, wow. I had to write it so in by hand. So this will be better. It's the key. A lot of people yeah. they go if they hit roadblock. Roadblock. They hit three roadblocks. They say. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, which is what fit. people will do. That's why you know, I'm it, glad to hear it's going to be. This more walks you through it. So yeah. as soon as you click on the next yeah. one, it says, "Okay, here's your next step." Okay, and then you do, and it just gives you just that one thing, and then it's like, okay. "What's well, on what you're viewing it on?" But it's right. It works. Right. Okay. So I, I, I admit, I'm, I'm going to imagine we're going to see a larger response for sure okay. off of it. Um, you know, I think we just we have to add a few more things in there and tweak a few things and. Just make it so that we're getting so all this, stuff. this survey is it only for people that might be looking for housing, or is this a general um, attitude mm -hmm. survey for the community? This is gonna. It is to my understanding what we what Don did the last time. 
Don Hall was it was targeting workforce people. I, I, so it, no, you're saying no, it didn't. Not exactly. Not no. exactly. No, it, it it has a little bit of more of a broader, a little more broader reach. There is a little bit of a. I didn't see it. Um, just because I was just looking at the questions now when I was inputting okay. in there, it is gener. It is. No, it's, I think it's all things housing in the area. If you feel like you can relate to something on here, you can respond mm -hmm. onto it. Um, it just asks you if you're a homeowner, a renter, are you happy in okay. the conditions? Can you afford your upkeep? Can you yeah. like? There's different things like that, and in, in general. So I guess okay. in a, it is a little bit more general, but it is. I mean, obviously, what we're a lot of the emphasis that's being worked on right now is workforce housing. Um, I think it's a good so, idea though to have it be more general because you might get some good ideas from people who. You might not hear from otherwise. So yeah. I think, I think Kurt, in the last you, one, for the most part, we we really heard back from the workforce housing is, is really the who response was. Right. On, on when we did get the, the responses we did get in the last time was very much workforce housing right. oriented too. So um, that seemed to be. Kurt, are you limited on the number of questions you can ask? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I mean. Right now, I think there's 15 on there without it being revised. We haven't revised it from anything yet. I just put in exactly what went out last time. And then we were gonna, I was trying to send it out to Don and, and Barb just for us to review, because we already had talked about that there's gonna be some changes. And so that's that's the stage we're at. So I, I don't know anything more than, um, I'm definitely not a question maker or uh, it's not my strong suit as far as that goes. But, you know, I think there's, Things that are going to change out that were brought up last time that might have been better to add in there. So. And speaking of housing, where is the revised short-term rental agreement at? Or we we received a, a response from the attorney when draft number eight went to the attorney, and they want a sit down with us. But we got that right at budget time, prior to election, so no one has had time. To, to sit down, the lawyers have to come to us. So now it's almost Thanksgiving, and holidays are coming. I'm expecting a granddaughter, a grandson rather, on December sixth. Congratulations! So availability might be a little lean until the first of the year, to be perfectly honest. I don't know how everybody else feels, but <clears throat> sorry to hear that. Well, crisis is only deepening. I keep hearing it seems like weekly. I hear about people leaving the area because they can't find everything. Is a Jamie crisis Organsky right now. who just who, who was, has been writing about it, wrote an article for the Adirondack Explorer that, oh, she had to move out of her Not because house. of short-term rental. I, but, it, but it is because the person that owns the home, her his daughter could not find a place to rent. That's why they got, so it, it is. It, but it she's, does. Still she's still here. But she's still here, but she's in this tiny little nothing with no yard with two, two boys. I mean, it's just... It, it's getting worse and worse, and there are people moving away. Probably, I don't know. I mean, they're all talking about it. it's terrible, and I understand. I know. I know. You, you've got Make a lot of things going on. Us, you know, it's just it's I mean, been this has been talked about for how how long? I you understand. Know, a that. really long. Time. And and the brakes got put on because the attorney said every time we give them something, this isn't constitutional. This isn't legal. And so everybody's ideas all sound great. But if you can't actually do it, then we're wasting our time. So when we have time, we will do that. And I'm not, I'm not trying to put it off, but I'm being realistic. It's holiday time. I don't know if they have time to come down. Mm. You know, so he's two weeks out for anything. Well, they, they wanted two weeks. Two week, he wants yeah. two weeks notice before he'll come here. Okay, well, I'm gonna just keep asking. Okay. Well, and we are we are not stopping on it. It's just it is what it is okay. right now. Thank you. Go ahead. But uh, um, the boat launch thing is has anyone looked into if if uh, like rivets is going to be available? Their launch is going to be open and ready and he was in my office. Go? He was in my office recently. He said that they're coming close to a conclusion with the legalities of the right away. Okay. And he said he he will. He's he's a businessman. Yeah. It will be open to the public. The launch he, will be. He's going to fix it back up. It will be open to the public next summer. Okay. And this. So. I mean, I, it might be private information with the seller with the boat launch area or the, um, the boat tour spot. Yeah. Like, is anybody else looking into purchasing that besides the town? Or is there anybody who's who we might be? Know. Yeah, we don't really know. I don't know that. Okay. Um, the other thing was, is it the, is it human or human property? Which which one is it? Human. 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 Okay, the human yeah. property. Now, is that still like where is that at right now? 
is, is that still because you have that in the highway the old highway spot right those are in the mix of this apartment complex uh you know housing authority project whatever whatever you want to call it not not real that is not that is That's just a, not. A, an interest just like what don's proposing for across the way it's a letter of interest okay so that's that wouldn't be a spot for something like that. So right now, well, it, it could be, but it could, it's not part of. Could, the there's no specific plans for that other yeah. than an expansion of the recreation area. Okay. And whatever is developable in there, and we haven't gotten in to test it. There's, it, we haven't committed to buying it. Okay. Uh, right now, I have set up an escrow account for them because I can't really put any money in. I can't give them any money because if I do, that negates the Empire State Development Grant that we would. Now, what is there? So if it's that's just a piece of property that the town is interested in because the lack of property in the area in general is that just something to have <clears throat> he approached us he, we he didn't approach him he approached us and wanted to know if we wanted it all right and, and then we thought about it and said oh, sure lastly um this is eight acres your ballpark number for the housing thing like is that i mean is that is that where you kind of is that your minimum of what you would you think you need to, to achieve that it's the, the it's whatever goal. they recommend to be perfectly yeah. honest. And we don't we don't have that part yet from the the, is the housing authority, right? Well, there no. It's all these or this Don 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 Hall. Don Hall. He hasn't given you like a, a specific amount of property that he thinks he would need. For that us came for, in. Was it from the IDA that that acreage came in originally? That and that was kind of was an like estimate of what's there. And I was just curious. curious. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just for other, like yeah. right. you know, if properties sort of pop up in my head, and I'm familiar with real estate in the area, and I was just thinking in my head, like, where, you know, where could this possibly work? Because personally, I, I, I think, uh, you know, they, this is so important that like right. it needs to be in the in the correct spot. And right. I, you know, I don't know if that one is. I'm not a, you know, that's not my, uh, I'm not a professional in that regard. If you're looking for an ideal spot that doesn't exist. Yeah, we've been. Told I think North Street is. Is, is fantastic spot. Nothing. We've been told by the Herkimer County IDA, by this consultant Don Hall, even by a couple of developers that came in here, this is a great spot for what we're doing. Old highway spot. Yes. Yeah. Sweet. Yes. And they're and they're the professionals. The, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's got a very good. The infrastructure is close enough to it, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it, we're just carving out a section of what they say for 45 units, eight acres, um, out of a larger parcel. Yeah. The eight yeah. acres would be the <laughs> optimum for development. Okay. Otherwise, you're going up the hill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. It's good to know. Uh, uh, this I'll go ahead. The restrooms <laughs> are gone. The porta potties. Why? Uh, basically, the, the, are there still people really riding down there? Well, they were riding the day. Were they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't understand. You know, it's, this organization sounds like we're coming uh, penny wise and dollar foolish. That brings tourism in here, those bikes. Look at all the new trails you just put in. Cause, and I do kind of disagree a little bit with you, Barb. This town is in snowmobile business. We got Macaulay Mountain. I now, didn't say we weren't in snowmobile business. No, no we weren't <laughs> in boat launching. You know, we are tourism, and the businesses here can't exist without tourism. There are enough people here to support them. We need the tourism for taxes, for everything we have. So anything we can do to enhance that, to me, is a benefit to all of us that live here. So putting a, why we took the restrooms away, because we're going to need them for an ice skating <coughs> rink. Now I know we don't need the one. Do we need the one up at Macaulay in the winter? No, the one, no, that that was, the it, one down here. And, that, and that, that's probably just more, and we can, we can <coughs> talk about the one at the bottom down there. I just that I always had it set up that basically come November they came and pulled the porta potty upstairs up, up above. I wasn't thinking about the fact about the one down below to be honest with you. So they they obviously just picked them both up at yeah, the same because time. People so. like to poop on my property. <laughs> <laughs> well we need a sign. They can use the bathroom but not a it's a long, very short ride on a bike. So to get to the new bathroom. So, so I think anything we can do to enhance this area and tourism it helps our businesses. So, you know, is this boat launch yet? I don't think we should get in boat cruises and all that. I agree with Barb or the rest of the board on that. I would rather but, sell them off. <clears throat> but a boat launch, Lake George, who owns the boat launch there? Oh, um, you have a house? Yeah, if you don't know, you ought to find out. Oh, I, they I own, can't. They rent docks. I can't imagine 
I think rivets are getting two to three thousand for a dock. I thirty six. Oh, it's more than that. Thirty six. Don just said so. I heard thirty four. Yeah. It was last year, then. Was it? Okay. I don't have a boat. But okay. I sold it. So not to belabor the boat docking or <coughs> boat launching or <coughs> tour boats, but there is the anticipation of a plan when the Hudson River Black River Water Authority redoes the dam, which is going to be done, whether it's 2022, 23, or 24 possibly now, they're going to bring equipment in from the Pied Piper side and tear that whole dock apart and make a big mess. So when they put that back together, that is where overnight docking can exist with finger docks. There's plenty of docking space. Kurt has a great plan because he has a great vision about how that could come together working with an existing lakefront revitalization plan. That's the space. We don't need the boat launch to put finger docks in for overnight docking. No, we do need a boat launch. There is a we, boat launch there right there. So I don't want to compete <clears throat> across the pond from yeah, public for a We need that tourism private business. business. This summer was a disaster. Disaster for boat launching. Yeah. I don't know. I put my boat in an inlet and it was fine. <clears throat> right. It's okay. But you're not a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't a shortage of boats on the water, Fred. So. There's not a shortage. Mm. No, definitely no shortage. shortage. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Well, well, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. Gotta, I, I we got to look for tourism and how to keep it flowing and all these, just like this bike trail. Oh, we never even had that. Nobody thought about that, what, five years ago? Bike trail. Oh yeah, it's been it's been basically five years. Yeah, about, about about five years. Yeah. And look what that's done. Brought in a new set of people. Yep. For tourism, we got to think sometimes outside the box. Mm. And that that's one right there. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. We're you gotta go higher. Fred's done. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just a couple of comments. When we do the survey, the Survey Monkey survey, maybe a heads up to the newspaper to get the word out that it's coming out. It's just another way to share information for those people that aren't on social media. Just a thought. Um, making sure that the school and the police department know it's coming out. So, because I understand that maybe teachers and police officers are having trouble finding places to stay as well. Again, just other groups that we want to make sure know that this is coming out so they can share that. Um, as far as Living ADK, I wanted to share that as a result of the recent nonprofit application opportunity that we shared via social media and through the newspaper several times, uh, we had a five-person committee um, which comprised of people from Inlet, Old Forge, and Woodgate that uh, met um, this week and we distributed money to 11 nonprofits in the area between Otter Lake and Racket Lake. And those, uh, well I'll not share the amounts, those uh, entities were the Otter Lake Fire Company, Haska, Kinderwood, Old Forge Library, Old Forge Volunteer Ambulance Corps, VIEW, Friends of the Polar Bears, Inlet Historical Society, the Inlet Area Business Association, the Inlet Area Task Force, and the Racket Lake Library. So um, that was over sixteen thousand dollars, and the balance, the fund, our fund for the COVID relief is now zero, and we're done. So um, those checks will be um, picked up very quickly, I'm sure. Um, so I'm very happy to to know that some of this money went back out into those nonprofits that couldn't do their fundraising uh, like many of us couldn't. A couple of notes from Dan. He's attending the inlet meeting tonight. Um, on broadband, uh, we're putting together a presentation for the board and community to discuss um, some high-level things that are going on, namely the North Country Broadband Alliance, um, challenging spectrum via the 2018 settlement, and the playbook on how to do so. The ECC data just released yesterday on the Mohawk Valley uh, speed slash coverage test, which is helpful to unlocking federal, state, county funds. The Tug Hill Commission uh, Adirondack mapping project, which is going to add our Herkimer County ECC data to this in its development. 
learning about newly released um, USDA grants for broadband expansion opening in 2022, learning about newly released New York State funds through the eBridge Act coming out in 2022. Regarding housing, uh, we recently had a Greater Mohawk Valley Land Bank um, presentation to our housing committee yesterday. The video is available on our website, uh, our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. The cohab cohabitation survey for a new web Herkimer County Joint Office of the Aging Program will be released next week in pen and ink form and online. The survey will look at viability of matching seniors with extra space in their homes to community families that could benefit from cohabitating with them. Uh, economically, the uh, Central Adirondack Regional Corridor had its first meeting uh, last week to begin working on a roadmap for regional year-round industry creation, incubation, and attraction efforts. Um, attracting and building year-round industries to help intermix with our tourism economy would increase stability of the area. So just some of the things we're working on. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you all. I need a motion to pay the audit claim. So moved. Done. Yes. Yeah. Done. Yeah. <laughs> second. Part second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion. Why'd you guys hesitate? I don't know. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you.